This is Sam Botstein from MachineSkills.com. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube for all of our machine tutorials and check us out at MachineSkills.com. In today's tutorial, we're going to take a further look at using the filter and LFO built into Machine Sampler in order to create a number of different interesting effects. In this particular tutorial, we're going to take a look at using two different sounds and combining them together with opposite facing LFO and filter settings in order to create a sound that essentially accentuates this third bar here. You can adjust this to fit any sort of length that you need, but in this particular case what we're going to do is accentuate this third bar so we have a sort of big build up to it and then we have a big fall away from it using the filters. Here's what that can sound like. So as you can hear, we basically are able to get the filters to push the cutoff down in one direction and up in another, such that when we arrive at the third bar, they're going to cross over. This is really straightforward to do. Essentially, I'm just using these sounds as one shots, meaning that the length of the note that I put on them doesn't matter. They're just going to play through the end of the sample. So these are what they'll be set to right when they load up. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the polyphony all the way down to 1 from 8, meaning that if we were to loop this, you know, if we're going to have a longer pattern of the scene and it's going to re-trigger, we don't want them to play over each other, we're just going to re-trigger them. So I'm going to set the other one to a polyphony of 1 as well. Next we're going to put two little hits at the beginning, this is all we need to get the sounds to play all the way through the bar. And over in the effects filter section, we're going to turn the filter to low pass 2 from off. And on one, we're going to turn the filter cutoff all the way down. And on the other, we're going to turn it all the way up. I'm going to show you some different options here if you want to sort of dial this in further or play around with this a little bit more. But we're going to start right here. Then we're going to go back to our first sound. We're going to go to the LFO section. And then under the sync section, instead of a free running LFO, we're going to choose a locked sunk LFO. And we're going to choose a speed of two bars. Then we're going to choose the cutoff as the destination. So essentially, not 100%, at a 50% about. As this plays over two bars, it's actually going to turn the cutoff of the filter up, meaning that where we started at 43.7 hertz here, we're actually gonna go all the way up around 1K. This is going to work well because this sound is actually quite a bit lower uh, than the other one. So that's all we need to do here on this first sound. On the second sound, we're going to do almost the opposite thing. So now that we have the filter all the way up as opposed to all the way down on the other sound, we're going to go to the LFO section. We're going to choose it to be locked as well. We're going to set the speed to two bars. And then we're going to send it to the cutoff in the opposite direction. Meaning, as the sound plays over two bars, it's actually going to turn the cutoff down from all the way up here at you know 19.6K all the way down to about, you know, one. Okay. So here's what that sounds like. Now, you can, you can dial this in a lot further if you wanted to. For one thing, Instead of having the cutoffs at opposite ends like that, we could actually put them all in the middle. And this way they will sort of diverge from one another out. And instead of only going halfway to the middle, here they'll go all the way to the ends because we have um, the ability to set the cutoff to 100%. So let's go ahead and set the cutoffs to 100%. Uh, well, the cutoff destination to 100%, and we'll set the cutoffs to 1K in both cases. So we also have the ability to actually set these to different speeds. When we do that, we'll actually hear a faster fluctuation, meaning we're going to hear the entire cycle of the LFO happen 
at the second bar and the third bar and the fourth bar as opposed to just the third bar. <laughs> For what we were originally going for, this is probably a little frenetic. So I'm going to put it back to 2 over 1, but we're going to actually change the shape now from a sine wave to a triangle. The sine wave is going to uh, have a little bit more drama to it, where the triangle is just going to be a sort of there and back motion. Like that, if you can visualize that. To take it a step further, we can put things back sort of the way they were in terms of having the cutoffs at opposite ends like that, and we can actually turn up the resonance a little bit. If we just wanted this whole pattern to have one big cycle, we could actually go back to the LFO and set it to 4 over 1. This way, over the entire pattern, we're only going to hear the LFO crossover once to be right at the third bar. I hope this helps give you guys a better understanding of how to use the built-in LFO and filter in Machine Sampler to create pad sounds and other interesting effects. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube for all our machine tutorials and check us out at machineskills.com.